the International Monetary Fund, an institution that promotes global economic stability and perhaps a lender of last resort, or as some say, an outdated organization whose policies damage the social and cultural fabric of a country. Let's take a closer look. The IMF was founded in 1944 at Bretton Woods in the United States. Since then, its membership has grown from 44 countries to 190. The IMF says it monitors the economic health of member countries and provides loans for governments in economic distress. Two years ago, at the height of the COVID-19 pandemic, more than 100 nations requested bailouts from the IMF. Here's our correspondent, Alan Fisher, reporting on those loans. From its headquarters here in Washington, the International Monetary Fund has put together a $9 trillion pot to help countries deal with the COVID crisis. Most of that money has come from the G20, the world's richest nations, and more than 100 countries have asked for help. Now, this is the IMF map of where money was distributed. Among those helped, $2.7 billion to Egypt, $411 million to Ethiopia, $361 million to Bosnia-Herzegovina. More recently, Sri Lanka received $2.9 billion after its economy faced collapse. It ran out of money for food, medicine, cooking gas and fuel. But critics of the IMF say it is outdated and ineffective. Of the 89 developing countries that received IMF loans between 1965 and 1995, more than half were no better off afterwards. In fact, 32 were poorer. Other critics question whether many nations which borrow money from the IMF have the ability to repay it. Now you're saddled with additional debt from the IMF, then some sort of longer term um, plan and program is likely going to have to step in to help countries through that. Now, the IMF is downgrading its forecast of 2.9% global growth in 2023. It says that's because of the increasing risk of recession and financial instability. Far from being transitory, as we thought, inflation is much more persistent. High energy and food prices, tighter financial conditions, lingering supply disruptions decelerate growth. All of the world's largest economy, economies are now slowing down. For better or for worse, many more governments may need to turn to the IMF in the coming months and years.